Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Wednesday. Grey. Bit dreary. No rain yet. <laughs> she says with fingers crossed and hope. <laughs> Good old British spring weather. Uh, it's a bit miserable and grey, but we're here. We are here and it's the spring equinox as well. So let's hope the weather realises that. <laughs> good morning, Jay. Good morning. Good morning. As always, if you are watching, do please pop a hello in the comments and we will see where today takes us. Um, good morning, Jane. What have we got to go through? So this weekend coming uh wild witchcraft conference horndean hampshire fantastic lineup of speakers if you've never heard if you've heard dave the bard sing but never heard him give a talk that's what he'll be doing at the wild witchcraft conference he is an entertaining and informative speaker definitely worth listening to uh, we've got the lovely Mara Starling as well and we've got a, a chap whose name I apologise but he's talking about, because I can't remember what it is, but uh, talking about dragon, German dragons apparently, so that would be really interesting too. And of course Jonathan Argento, brilliant, brilliant um, event, lovely energy, a few stalls in there as well, it's going to be a good one, so if you haven't got your tickets, get them now. Next month is Wandering Witches, another fantastic event, lots of things to buy. <laughs> uh, we've got online rituals as well, uh, April and May uh, going forward every month. Have a look on my events page on my website. Have a look on the Kitchen Witch events page on that website as well. Oh, look, there's the links there as well. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Emma. Gloomy from a gloomy Bedfordshire. Yeah, it is a bit gloomy here. Yeah, I know what I know what you're saying. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, Xenia. Happy spring equinox. In northern Germany, the few warmer days were spoiled by rain. Yeah, I'm hoping it doesn't rain today. I'm out in nature today. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't rain. Good morning, Leslie. Good evening, Sephora, and happy autumn equinox to those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, oh, look, there's the links. Look, self-confidence ritual, Saturday 13th of April, open to everyone. Good morning, Angela, from a very sunny France. If you could send some of the sunshine just across the water, that would be appreciated. Good morning, Jalala from a sunny Normandy. Yep, come on, send that sun over. It's not far. <laughs> Good morning, Hannah. Uh, oh, yes, I have another course with the College of Psychic Studies online course. I'm doing Wild Witchcraft in April. So have a look at that as well. Uh, what else we got here? Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Melody from a grey, rainy Leicestershire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems to have been the trend lately, doesn't it? It's a little bit boring now. Uh, Sephora, the link pixie. Good day over to YouTube. I'll get him on it, Sephora. <laughs> um, good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, oh, that's on your birthday, Maria. Perfect. See? <laughs> um yeah lots going on so have a look on the what's on pages on my website in the kitchen witch website uh and of course the pagan portal podcast steaming along we've had some amazing amazing chats uh we had cindy brannan last week fascinating to talk to uh, i know very little about hecate uh and it was fascinating talking to her because that's her bag on all of the usual you know podcast platforms uh not a new one this week we'll have a new one next week every two weeks well first and third friday of every month uh so we've had some brilliant people so have a look have a look uh good morning kerry um good morning good morning trudy Yes, happy spring equinox to everyone. Um, I'm not working with it today because according to the weather outside, it's not here yet. <laughs> I know it's the equinox today, um, but it doesn't feel like it yet. Just, I am going out in nature today, so I will be connecting with those energies. 
let's hope I feel that spring energy when I'm actually outside. We'll see. Good morning, Tony. Welcome, welcome. So we've had lots of requests to, to talk about uh, Spirit Place. So that's the subject today. How do you feel about the spirit place, the genus loci? How do you feel about the spirit of your land, the spirit of your home? How do you connect when you connect to spirit of the place, when you connect to your house, to whatever spot you might be in? How do you connect with it? Uh, how do you work with it? That's the theme for today. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Tess. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So, yeah, spirit of place. It's a weird one, actually. When I first started, you know, when dinosaurs were roaming the earth, Venus loci wasn't, it wasn't a thing that was mentioned. I didn't really hear or read people talking about spirit of place. It seems to be something that's on trend. Who oh, get me? I'm on trend. <laughs> I've very rarely ever been on trend in my entire life. <laughs> um, but it does seem to be a key theme. Now, and actually, I believe that's what uh, Dave the Bard's talking about at the World Witchcraft Conference this weekend. So that'd be interesting. Um, yeah, so the spirit of place. It, it seems to be a kind of key theme at the moment. Uh, I still haven't replaced the battery in the smoke alarm. <laughs> yeah, it's a trend thing, but it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. And it's a fascinating thing to look at. Obviously, the term is ancient. And we'll have a look at that in a second. Right, Zephora, is the Kalech swatting off spring still? Yes. Oh, she's hanging on. She doesn't like to let go. Really doesn't like to let go. Uh, Emma says Uncle Paul's calling it chocolate day. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, any day is chocolate day, really. Yeah, any excuse. Good morning, Anne. Uh, good morning, Annette. Um, let's see where else we've got. Right. Let's put some of these up. Jane, the spring is sprung, the grass is riz, but not the lawn. It's been shoved into the cracks in the paving. We have a celandine lawn instead. Lovely yellow flowers everywhere. That sounds fabulous. That does sound fabulous. We have got tulips just about to spring into life, just about to open in our garden. And things have got green buds and green shoots and things on. So Mother Nature's doing a thing. She's, she's working hard. Good morning, Nita from Four Marks just down the road. Looking forward to Saturday. And the conference, come up and say hello. Do come up and say hello. Good morning, Sue from Rainy Sunderland. Yeah, that seems to be the theme from anyone in Britain at the moment. Raining again. Raining again. Raining again. Uh, Maria, yes, the Kayla has gone on a bender this year. She has. <laughs> She's, she likes the rain. She's obviously into water very heavily this year very heavily um here we go let's get something up this is david morning good morning house spirits now i know you work with house spirits a lot david so i'd love for you to share how you work with them the home guys under the floorboards and cupboards are going to enjoy this <laughs> it makes me think of the very first terry pratchett book that i read the carpet people yeah all living under yeah that makes sense Love to love to hear about how you guys all work with your house spirits. Uh, right, this is Senia. I think spirits of place come from shamanic influences because in shamanic work, it's widely worked with. Actually, let's get some history stuff here. I have my trusty dictionary of Roman religion. Genus loci is from ancient Rome. Um, now, I know in shamanic practices and in my hedge riding as well, we do work with spirits of plants. Uh, and we do work with spirits of animals. So there is that theme absolutely running through all of the shamanic type practices. Spirit of place or genius is an ancient Rome term. So let's have a look. Uh, this is quite interesting, actually. The actual first part of that genius is, or geni, literally means begetter. A man's guardian spirit, which also enabled him to beget children. In women, the corresponding, guard, corresponding guardian spirit was called uh, Iuno or Juno. The genius of the household, genius paterfamilias, and I apologise for my terrible, terrible pronunciation, was worshipped by the household on the birthday of the head of the male, the male head of the household. 
uh, in whom it was thought to reside. Its symbol was the snake and it was often portrayed as such in Roman art. The genius was often worshipped with the la at the lararium. The idea of a genius was extended so that groups of people and even places and areas had their own genius. This expansion resulted in a greater number of genii presiding over groups of people, such as the Roman people, and over places such as the city of Rome. So that's where the genius loci term comes from. There are various genius. So genius, that's literally just genius. That's the origins of that. There's a genius Augusti, which means spirit of Augustus. He was a Roman, a Roman deity who was the genius of the emperor Augustus. Uh, it was a decree of the Senate that at every formal dinner, both private as well as public, a libation had to be poured out to this deity. Empress had quite a sense of importance. <laughs> Uh, if you are familiar with the hooded spirit images in Roman, ancient Roman art, there's the genius Colcolatus or hooded spirits. This name given to a series of representations, usually relief carvings in stone of hooded deities. A colculus was a hood fastened to a cloak. And the name Gino, Col Col oh, all these words, is too early, Colcolato. Uh, is mentioned in lots of inscriptions in Roman Celtic shrines. Uh, in Europe, the genius Colcolatus usually appears singly as a giant or dwarf, but in Britain, three identical dwarfs are usually portrayed. Uh, and I've seen lots of images of the three. Um, they're often portrayed carrying eggs or bags of money, sometimes with scrolls, and at times they are associated with mother goddesses. There is then, of course, the genius loci spirit of the place originally that term was used uh, if someone wanted to make offerings to deity or gods or the spirits and they were in a place they were unfamiliar with and they didn't know the name of the deity of that place they would give an offering to the genius loci the spirit of the place when they were uncertain of the name of the deity to whom the sacrifice was being made and that's where it comes from Genius paterfamilias is the spirit of the head of the household. Uh, genius patre is a deity whose spirit of the country. Genius publicus populi romani, <laughs> spirit of the community of the Roman people. Um, it's interesting, interesting to look at. It's an ancient Rome term, and I think we generally use it now to be the spirits of whatever place you're standing in whether it's a house, um, a hospital, a grove of trees, a field, whatever it might be, genius loci is the spirit of place. So it's an ancient Roman term, and I think it sums things up quite well, quite interesting, quite interestingly. So let's have a look at these. Sephora, I think because everyone spent much time recently sharing spirit of the house, maybe more away, it's something to tend to. Trying very hard to remember to acknowledge and not just assume. Wise words always. <laughs> Good evening, Sue from Autumnal New Zealand. Lots in the, from the Southern Hemisphere today. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Tess, my lovely pink flowers have bloomed, had snowdrops a few weeks ago, and the Forsythia is all yellow. Forsythia is a definite sign of the spring, isn't it? Uh, Tony, thought that was my fire alarm. Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, we've got a smoke detector in here and it needs a new battery, so it does beep quite often. I will change it. Good morning, little Miss Nemo. David's got a sunny morning. Send it this way, send it this way. Annette, dawn chorus and buds bursting. It's spring. I can actually, can just, the sun's starting to come out. Shh, don't scare it away. <laughs> Nita, yes, me too. Tulips are just about to pop. I love that. I'm happy or star to all. Uh, Jane, genius loci is very um, evident in the big old houses we meet in for mediumship sessions. We get visited by all the past occupants and employees of the house. Okay, so let's have a bit of a split here. Uh, when you're visited by past occupants and spirits of the house, that is spirits. I don't want to use the words ghosts because that's kind of a, doesn't really describe it. Genius loci are different. They're not 
ghosts. They're not spirits of past loved ones. Uh, genius loci is the actual energy of the place. So two different things. You can have the genius loci of a field, of a building, of whatever ground you're standing on. It's not the spirit of people. It is the general energy of the place. Um, the land holds memories. Buildings hold memories. So we've lived in a house for, I don't know, probably coming up 30 years now. Um, so it holds the energy of us. There are past owners that have come through from a mediumship point of view, but the genius loci is the spirit of the actual place. It's the energy of the place. And it is quite different. Um, just to split them up a bit. Um, Miss Nemo. Uh, my mother used to say, when spring is sprung and the grass is riz, what does a mister say to a miss? Give her the kiss. <laughs> oh, tea. That's really creepy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, turmeric tea. Mm. <laughs> Thank With you. added honey. With added honey, yeah, that makes it bearable. <laughs> There's lots of old folk sayings, actually. They're always really interesting to look at and usually quite right. I'm doing fine with the pronunciations. Thank you, little Miss Nemo. You're very accommodating. <laughs> um, Tess. Just studied Rome as part of my cultures module, although we didn't talk about it's genius. Got an eye in there. Um, this is my Roman dictionary, dictionary of Roman religion. Um, it is literally a dictionary of all different Roman terms um, from the religious point of view. Very, very useful when you are researching. I've been researching uh, the Roman pantheon for a year and a half now. I love the way that they work. I love the way that they, they have shrines in the house to their household spirits, to the genius loci, to the um, paterfamilias genus. It's fascinating. Um, what about Athens, Rome? Started studying, okay, Athens, Rome, Athens, Greece, <laughs> obviously. Started studying BA honours with the Open University. It's fascinating. Well, my son is at college doing A-levels and he is studying ancient Rome and ancient Greece. We went to Athens with him last year, which was fascinating. And he went to Rome last week, which he absolutely loved. It's fascinating. The actual Roman religion is fascinating and how that I love their practices, the way that they actually for want of a better word, worship a deity. I don't like to use that word because worship doesn't seem quite right. But yeah, fascinating. But that's where genius loci comes from. <laughs> Maria, is this where the idea of leprechauns came from? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't know anything much about leprechauns. You'll have to ask Morgan Daimler about that one. <laughs> um Annette, my dear house, my condolences on your house news too. Annette is part of the family. She has a spirit and it's definitely a she. Houses do. Houses do have. This is the genius loci of your house. And it is built from the energy of the land it's on, from those that have lived before to a certain degree. But you put your own energy in it as well um, by talking to it, by connecting to it. Uh, and yeah, absolutely, it has a spirit. Angela, our, ha Angela, our house was built in 1594, slightly older than mine. <laughs> mine was built in 1910, um, but there are parts of it. 1910? Yeah, but there are parts of it that are much older. Sits on a cross point of ley lines. Ooh, interesting. An old hollow way and a spring natural well nearby. It has quite a few spirits, both of the former human variety, from various periods and definitely some nature spirits associated with the place. Borage is about to flower, beautiful, beautiful plant. It is. It. I also don't think that you can't work with genius loci if your house is a new build. The house will be new, it'll have a new energy, but the land it is on will have that genius loci um, and your house will build its own spirit eventually. David, keeping the good weather. We're on the bikes to play with the pups. We've had enough of wet. Yeah, oh, I've had enough of rain. I want to get out in the garden. No, Paul, I don't want your rain. 
<laughs> you can keep your rain. <laughs> Uh, hi, Karen. Genius Loci, Spirit of Place is today's talk. Uh, little Miss Nemo, would a vibes be a fair translation of Genius Loci? Yeah, that's quite a good description. It's an energy. I think perhaps the word spirit is a bit misleading because when you think about spirit, you think about ghosts. Uh, I, it's a weird word, ghost, and but it kind of sums it up because that's not what they are. It is an energy. It's the energy of the place. It's kind of the memories that have built up. So, for example, uh, many years back now, we went to Hastings and we visited the site that's not actually in Hastings, just outside where the Battle of Hastings was. And I was a baby, baby witch. I know people hate that term, but I was, you know, new to all. I was just open to whatever energy was there. And it was totally and utterly overwhelming because the land holds on to the memories and the energies and the emotions of events and things that have happened there. So I got hit with it all. And in actual fact, when we go to Glastonbury and we go to the Chalice Well Gardens, I have to shield quite heavily because I think people go to the Chalice Well when they're upset when they want to release stuff, when they want to let go of things. And I picked up on all of that. And all of that energy that gets dumped there, the land holds on to, the actual place holds on to it. So it's it's be mindful if you are going somewhere where you know it has a bit of a, a hinky history to shield first, just so that you don't get overwhelmed with it all. Um, but uh, yeah, and vibes, energy, that's what it is. It's the energy of a place. Good morning, Vintage Witchcrafts, Jackie. Dull morning, been raining here, but we're building large compost bins. Excellent. For Scythia and Decentra flowering. Buds on fruit bushes. We're spreading manure on the garden borders belatedly. I think everything's going to be belatedly in the garden, is it? Because it's been so wet. We need to cut down, cut back all of their grasses, but they're ornamental grasses. It's too wet. It's too wet to get out there. Sephora. My husband said that about visiting the Alamo, uh, the energy was definitely palatable. Yeah, because that when big, huge events have happened, um, this there's big emotion dumps really, and that energy can be quite overwhelming. Jane, can't wait oh, for the lilac blossom. It smells divine. Beautiful, beautiful trees. Beautiful trees. Good morning, Karen. Maria, the spirit of the place I feel works with deity that I connect with and keeps it in balance. Nice way of looking at it. Nice way of looking at it. Uh, Debbie, are they related to the Fae? I would say no. It's it's not a they really. It's a thing. It, it's a it's a collective energy rather than um no I would say not Fae. It is it's not a thing. It is a collective energy. I mean I'm just speaking from my own experience really but also going by the definition that the Romans had of it. Um, it is a, an energy of the space. Yeah Maria put the square battery in that's the problem we haven't got any more spare square batteries. We need to get some square batteries. <laughs> David all homes have energies. Uh, even if it's just sleeping. Some people's homes I've found sort of sleep when the owners don't interact with them. I feel that's a bit disrespectful. That is a nice way of putting it. It is a nice way of putting it. I interact with their house all the time. Tell it when we're going away. Tell it when we're having work done. Say hello when I come back in. Uh, and I think it's important because that help. It helps build your connection to your home. It helps you make helps make you feel like you're at home and comfortable at home. But the house looks after you too and i think it's a bit of a two-way thing so my house has a spirit of place but the ground beneath it has spirit of place as well uh, which is slightly different because the ground has the land has more history to it uh, but yes i yeah that makes perfect sense david good morning christine Jane, do you think the spirits of the previous occupants can help to contribute to the great spirit of a place? They might lend their energy to help feed the genius loci, perhaps. Now we have, we've, been, I say, we've been here nearly thirty years. There was an old lady that was here before who passed away in the house, 
um, her spirit went, never felt that connection. She's gone. She went. Um, there are older spirits, much older spirits. Uh, people have lived on the land that my house is on since, um, you know, ancient cavemen times. I know cavemen's the wrong word, but there's, there's one of the one of the lithics. <laughs> Um, so it does, there are older spirits here, um, but for me they are separate, but yes, I get what you mean. I mean, we, the, my family, will add our energy to the house. We will add our energy to um, the genius loci. Yeah, feed's quite a good word, I think, Jane. Feed is quite a good word. I don't feel the previous occupant's spirit within the house genius loci it is they are that's a separate thing but yes i get what you mean um and i think that is perhaps when you've been when you visit a place and you get that real oh hinky someone's walked over my grave kind of feeling it is often because something terrible has happened there and that will have added to the energy of the place and yeah with you know if someone was murdered or something like that their spirit would have obviously been very unhappy about it so, yes, would probably have lent a bit of their energy to it. Emma, I used to honour the energy of the house quite often. He wasn't, he hasn't been too happy since I lost my way on my path and stopped honouring the house spirit. It's like anything, isn't it? Um, if you neglect deity, if you neglect your animal spirit guide, they're going to get a bit fed up. That's, you know, but it happens. It happens to us all. It does happen to us all. And I think from my point of view, working with the genius loci of the house keeps it happy, keeps it from, <laughs> keeps it standing. <laughs> but it's like anything. It's a relationship of sorts. So, you know, if you don't look after the relationship, it, it does, you know, get a bit unhappy about it. David, since moving out here four years ago now, I've been finding out about the local spirits. We have the River Loddon in front of the house, and I've been talking to her to find out more about the area. Now, rivers are particularly strong with spirit. I think that's how deities came about a lot of the time, particularly in England. Every river um, was a provider of food, so it gave life. But if it was a big, powerful river then it could take life as well so i think ancient man would have started oh let's be nice to the river because it gives life but it takes life so they would have begun to connect with the energy of it they would have begun to oh i'm just going to give an offering to the river because i want to cross it safely or i'm just going to put this offering in the river because i'd like plenty of fish today and it built and it built and it went from giving perhaps respect to the river so that it was good to you so that it looked after you and it evolved into the spirit of the river spirit of place and i think eventually that would have evolved into giving it a name sabrina river goddess and became a goddess uh, there's a bit of a journey there i think um, but I think every every place has a spirit of place, an energy to it. Uh, and, you know, honouring it and looking after it and connecting with it is fascinating. Jalala, I'm completely in love with the land here. It feels incredibly magical. There is a grove which feels full of energy and spirit. I felt many others there when I meditate. I wonder if people gathered in the grove in times long past ancient pagans did trees groves in particular were their place of worship so quite possibly annette the house has such a presence she is gentle and welcoming usually but my goodness she's not pleased now there have been strange noises and you can feel the sparking energy now air house was very uncomfortable when we were having the renovations done and you can understand it i mean we were you know <laughs> with the noise and the chaos and uh, it's a bit like the house having surgery, really. <laughs> oh, I, absolutely. And I think any area that is undergoing, any area of land that's undergoing any kind of building work or transformation is going to understandably be upset about it all. <laughs> I'm not quite that old, Claire. 
<laughs> baby in 10 since 1066 my body feels it's that old quite a lot um yes silly question there's never any silly questions sure we've discussed before memories of how do you shield there is a uh blog post on my personal blog about shielding i think it's called shields up <laughs> uh, but shielding is about blocking your uh yourself your psychic self from negative energy uh you quite often find it uh if you're out with lots of people and it can be quite overwhelming because you're picking up on everybody else's energy you might find it as well there might be one particular person in your group friends group family group whatever that whenever you you go and have a coffee with them and then you come away feeling completely drained that's because they're quite negative and they've drained all your energy out so shielding is very useful for that and it's also useful if you are in a place where you know there's been a lot of nasty happenings or sad happenings um and it is very very simple the simplest one is a bubble shield literally visualize a bubble surrounding you uh, you can draw it up from the earth you can draw it down from the divine from the air around you from any of the elements you can visualize it as a shiny bubble or a glittery bubble or it's got to be movable so make it flexible <laughs> but it's like a like a second skin but give yourself a bit of breathing room make it a little bit away from your body um another one is a cloak is to visualize yourself putting on a cloak think the invisibility cloak in harry potter cloak on hood up and you've bought in your protection um, and when you're read, when you're finished with it, just visualize it all dissolving. The bubble shield in particular, if you are in a really harsh situation, you can visualize mirrors on the outside that deflect negative energy, although I wouldn't do that all the time because it's quite exhausting. Um, but having that bubble shield is it just keeps out that negative energy and protects you from having your own energies drained or for you taking on board anything negative, particularly if you're a holistic healer. If you're doing reflexology or any of the other holistic treatments, I mentioned that one because it's my favourite one. <laughs> if you're dealing with people who are emotionally um, unhappy or physically unwell, you don't want to be taking all that negative energy on. So putting your shield up is a definite way of protecting yourself from it. But there is a blog post on that if you want to have a look as well, Tess. Angela, our house is a she too. She feels like a mother with a warm hug. That's nice. We have almost an acre and the whole plot has many, many layers of genius loci. Fascinating that it feels so different from our neighbor's house plot because each one, each place will have its own energy. Uh, and it is, it soaks up the memories of things that have happened there um, and, and whatever's gone through it. So there are going to be, each place will be different. And years ago, before I knew I went to York and my feet were burning, I did realise why. When I did past regression, I found out, oh, well, I was burnt in a past life. Yeah, that'll make you a bit a bit toasty. York's lovely, though. I went as a teenager. Love to go again. Fascinating place. David, she's not too happy. She's not happy being put in a dress. Then I found out the river used to be more a marsh like wetlands, which explains why we have always welcome in the fen. OK, that makes sense. I was <laughs> confused for a moment there. <laughs> Xenia, English language has it easier to distinguish ghosts like dead people from spirits, spirits of place, land, vatir, nature, spirits, elves, powerful animals, field, a spirit guide. In German, we call them all ghosts. Ah, uh, Yeah. <laughs> But it is confusing, isn't it? And when we use the word spirit of place, I think a lot of people do immediately go to the ghosts, the spirit of the past. Um, but all of those things are different, aren't they? Each one of those is a different thing. Yeah, language, is, language can be confusing. <laughs> Emma, it's not just permission, it's mandatory. <laughs> Natalie, moved to Glastonbury off the cuff because I fell in love with the house. The White Springs is still my most favourite place here. It's taken me two years of grounding our energy into the building. Uh, hats off to you for living in Glastonbury. Uh, the energy in Glastonbury is so uh, strong and overwhelming. I, 
it does it overwhelms me completely when i go there so uh, to actually live there <laughs> i would have to um i think i'd have to wear a shield the whole time <laughs> uh, yes white springs is lovely um the white springs is absolutely beautiful um did my led my very first ritual there as a high priestess so it's got very special memories for me um but it is a magical place there's so much history and magical connections and ley lines and the landscape and Glastonbury is so magical. So it is a powerhouse of different energies. Absolutely. Nita, I was in Bea a few years ago and visited one of the large graveyards. Friends with us said they felt peace and calm. I did not. It just felt rage and anger. And although it was incredibly beautiful, I felt only sadness. And as witches and, and magical practitioners, we pick up on this stuff so easily, so easily. Little Miss Nemo, our house is very easy towards us. I feel it every day and I'm thankful that the relationship is good. That's good. Jane, from what you just said about collective energy, I wonder if that's how the visiting spirits get the energy to come through. Maybe they use it like a battery to communicate with us and add to it by visiting. Sometimes the rooms we meet in are heaving with energy. May well be. May well be. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that before. Um, but, yeah, it's just, just mindful that they are separate, that the genius loci, the spirit of place, is not ghosts. But, yeah, I can see how they would work um, in harmony, in collaboration with each other. Jalala, I remember touching the wall of my old house to thank it and say goodbye when we left. Um, yes, and I think as well, if you are, uh, there was a query on the Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook the other day about trying to sell your house. I think you have to make peace with your house if you are going to move from it to be able to sell it. You want people to come into your house as buyers and go, wow, this is lovely. If your house doesn't want you to sell, <laughs> that spirit of place is going to be very anti <laughs> and it's definitely going to put people off. Um, yeah, it's about, I think it's it's a bit like bees. Bear with me, there's a connection. When you work with bees, you have to tell them everything. The bees need to know all the gossip. They need to know what's happening. I think your house is the same. It needs to know what's happening in it to be comfortable. Um, so it's about telling it what's going on, keeping it in the loop, so to speak. Annette, our house has no proper foundations, just some under the floorboards, so it really feels grounded here. Yeah, you're in direct contact. Maria, it's like the fibres of the place that surround all around and keeps it in check. Nice, I like that description. Jane, Neolithic, if my compost bin is out to go by. There's too many lithics. <laughs> uh, Jackie, we live with the previous occupant, mother-in-law. Well, their house will be a combination of, you know, memories and energies of things that have happened uh, over the years. So, yeah, they, they do. It, it's a combination, isn't it, I think? Karen, do you think the spirit of place, sorry, got to have some tea. Turmeric tea is bearable with honey in it. Do you think the spirit of place at the more touristy sites gets confused? Mm -hmm. Sometimes feel nothing at the major sites, but get hit like a bolt of lightning at a random area of no particular interest. The biggest one for me has got to be Stonehenge. I have had the honour of being in ritual. Uh, and co-leading rituals in the centre of Stonehenge um, on particular occasions with different groups. Uh, I was initiated at Stonehenge as well. I don't feel much from it. The stones are beautiful. If you can put your hands on the stones, which we're able to do if you get um, special access, there's a there's a sad energy to it. There is quite an, I think it's quite a neglected energy um, because it's had so many tourists over the year and it's had on the open 
uh, solstices where people have partied and got drunk and there's all kinds of stuff going on. I think the magic that it possibly once had is, is long gone, for me anyway. And I think the, the, the spirit of the place is just quite sad now. Um, that's how I feel about it. I think if you want a, a more magical energy from stones, then Avebury is much better. But I have, yeah, I've had much more magical and spiritual connections to the land in places off the beaten track that don't have huge amounts of tourists going through. When we went to Athens last year, we visited all of the sacred sites, but they were all very, very unloved. Uh, they felt just, you know, yeah, I'm a piece of rock. Yeah, I'm a piece of stone. There was nothing there. There was no energy there. Um, my personal experience, anyway. But yes, I do. I, I agree with that. I agree with that completely, Karen. Little Miss Nemo, daughter at home with a mild cold today. I hope she feels better soon. So we're going to spend the day doing our star things. Possibly go to the park field and think about the genius loci there. Uh, yes, I'm going out in nature today to do just that. Karen, our house was a bit chaotic when we first lived here and the man whose mum and dad here disapproved of everything we did, which I think really affected us. But now it's calm and feels safe because you add your own energy to it over time. Um, when we looked, when we went house hunting a million years ago, we looked at several different houses as soon as we walked into this one and it was empty there was no one living here it was completely empty no furniture no nothing painted magnolia from top to bottom throughout soon changed that <laughs> um, as soon as we walked in there was a positive energy it was like the house welcomed us we walked into other houses and thought Meh, yeah this one straight away as soon as we walked in the door we knew it was the right one and that's the genius loci connecting with you. <laughs> I, am, I am buying square batteries this week. I will, I promise. <laughs> Emma, my hometown means bend in the river. Not very imaginative, but I love it. A lot of place names like that. I, I live in Portsmouth. It's the port mouth. <laughs> really not imaginative. Miss Nemo, I've been looking at the Ark of the Goddess branch glass that's within the kitchen, which school started with March. Started thinking about genius loci in the idea of appropriation. How so? Explain. <laughs> Hi, Candy. There are a lot of abandoned homes in my neighborhood. I can feel how sad they are. I don't understand where their families have gone. It's so sad. Yeah, you can feel it, can't you, when you walk past some of the houses when there's no one living there? Hi Louise, people often comment our house has a nice atmosphere, also the previous house. I hang hearts and stars on every available handle and make aromatherapy products, donuts, does, do, oh, can't speak, smell nice. There are some houses I find I can almost not look at as there's such a bad energy around them. Uh, and it happens. That is, that's the that's the spirit of the place that you're feeling. It's It's either happy or not happy about something. Maria, I noticed around 10 years back when someone was staying here with us, the place was not happy and began playing up with doors not opening and alarms randomly going off. Yeah, my smoke alarm is just because of the battery, not because the house is upset. Oh, there's a link to my Shields post. Thank you. Hi, Eve. Hi, Harmony. Sephora. Shields up is like putting on noise cancelling headphones when you're autistic. Everything's just a bit calmer. Not just when you're autistic. Noise cancelling headphones are brilliant for when um, you're feeling overwhelmed by anything, really. Um, yeah, Shields up for me is Shields up, red alert. If you're a Star Trek fan, that's that's my key. When I need to put my shields up, that I have Will Riker in my head saying Shields up, red alert, and it just goes... Whoop. <laughs> and it's done. Nita, uh, my goodness, yes. I shield every time I do card readings. I shield my cards too with crystals. Um, I cleanse my cards with crystals. I don't necessarily shield them because um, when I'm doing a tarot reading, 
to a certain extent, the cards need to pick up on the energy of the person you're reading for, I think. Um, but it is, yeah, see, that's the smoke, smoke detector really getting annoyed at me now. <laughs> but it has to work for you. It absolutely has to work for you. If you feel that you need to shield yourself, if you feel that you need to shield something, um, I've done it for my children going to school. I have visualised shields around them as they've gone out the door. Protective shields. Got to work for you. <laughs> David. Uh, little Miss Nima, have a picnic with your daughter. I've never met a spirit of loco that doesn't like a picnic. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a few I wouldn't party with. They're grumpy. Yeah. And there's places, isn't it? It's what they, what they pick up on. Annette, we are semi-detached. Our neighbours are a mirror image. The house has a different energy completely, and it will do because it's seen different things. It's had different things happen in it and around it. Um, yeah, every, they're all, like every individual person has their own character and personality. Houses are exactly the same. Jane, my bubble shield is a big wibbly-wobbly jelly bean. I like it with a zip up the back and a mirrored surface on the outside. I summon it from my witchy wardrobe in the ether and it hurtles towards me and zips itself up the back. I can hear the zip noise <laughs> as it does it. Sometimes it's just grey candy floss whizzing up around me from the ankles to make me invisible. It was slow at first, but now it's instance. I love all of those ideas, Jane. And yes, good point. When you do start working with shields, it will take time. Uh, it'll take time and it'll take practice. Once you get adept at it, it is instant uh, with no effort at all. Annette, I loved Glastonbury. After two days there, I was drained. Never thought of shielding. Oh, yeah, it's a bit like, um, I, I, I don't know how people work in crystal shops. All of that energy. Wowza. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love, I, you know, Glastonbury is a fascinating place to go to. But I do, there's quite a, a whirly gig of energy there. Uh, little Miss Nemo, I'd love to take my daughter to Glastonbury, but it's not hubby's favourite place because it's become a bit touristy. It has, I have to admit, sorry, Glastonbury, it has become quite touristy. Uh, watch the prices in the shops too. Um, but there are some fantastic vendors there. There are some absolutely fantastic places to look at. But there's also lots of other fascinating places as well. Um, it's a bit like the Stones. Stonehenge, iconic. Avebury, free to get into for a start. And I think more magical. So yeah, there's lots and lots of sac sacred special places. Morning, Lani. David, nothing wrong with doing the tourist bit when visiting a place. It's like going to a disco, not dancing. <laughs> Let loose and enjoy being basic. Oh, yeah, and there's a certain amount of places on there that you think, I, I, I need to visit there, done that, been there, done that. Yeah, absolutely. And No, still not on the coffee. Still not on the cookie. <laughs> turmeric tea, rather make curry. Oh, I do love a curry. No, I'm on turmeric tea. It's supposed to lower your blood pressure. Got my little watch on with my, you know. <laughs> tells me when I'm just about to drop dead. <laughs> Jane, I think Stonehenge has had more energy taken away from it than has been added. Yeah, I think you're right. It's as if it's upped and taken its energy elsewhere. Yeah, I, yeah. Or if you watch Doctor Who, obviously it's all beneath the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Jane. Absolutely. Hi, Amanda. Little Miss Nemo. Stonehenge is on my pilgrimage pilgrimage list i've been to glastonbury lovely but the abuse it seems to have suffered makes my heart ache i think i'll have to wait for another life i, I think if you are visiting the stones the avery is beautiful uh, i think it's nicer um uh, louise agrees as well yeah oh and tony <laughs> it is more relaxing you're right yes uh angela we were sad and disappointed when we visited stonehenge it felt like it was dying and that was shortly before it's closed off to the public. I can't or can imagine how I would feel now. Um, I mean, I can remember back to the 70s when Dad used to drive us up there for a picnic. We'd park on the verge, get out of the car, and all go and sit in the middle of it with our picnics, literally on the stone in the centre, put your picnic out. <laughs> um, I think there are 
a lot of more interesting places to visit to be honest but then I have been there already so maybe it would be different if I hadn't already been there several times over uh, there are lots of sacred fascinating places everywhere so uh, look in your area I mean it's I am very lucky I live in a historic sea town and we've got all sorts of wonderful things uh, in our area have a look do a bit of research it's so easy now with google have a look for uh, places in your area that are sacred um, and if you live in England buy the gods and goddesses of England book and you'll find out the local deities in your area <laughs> you like that subtle hint <laughs> do a google there's lots of ancient places in your area um, you can't help but fall over ancient places in Britain so um, have a look and I'm sure that's the same for most places uh, Xenia I went past Stonehenge with a Wiccan friend it felt odd for me and I thought okay can we go now didn't feel comfortable Avebury in Cotrary feels lovely and welcoming even though that one is a tourist site too I maybe it is perhaps because it is open and you can just wander around it feels a bit more uh relaxed um but yes I would say if you're looking for stone circles then Avebury over Stonehenge is, is for me I don't know what the dog's barking at something Steve I get a sad energy whenever I visit Stonehenge St Stanton Drew yes Stanton Drew is fascinating too uh yeah one of the very first rituals i went to was at stanton drew uh led by ronald Hutton, uh many years ago now that's a fascinating place too uh debbie for years whilst out walking the dogs in the forest i would always end on a track looking across at a beautiful bungalow backing onto the woods and wish i could live there it, I was very drawn to it. Many years later, in a change of circumstances, led me to randomly knocking on the door one evening and asked if they wanted to sell. We've lived here for 20 years now. Oh, over 20 years. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Yeah, there's a house I like just down the road. <laughs> but no, I love my home. I love my home. Yeah, it's that's a brilliant story. Uh, Trudy, I came across the term Arwen. I know it's a relatively new word compared to genius loci. Am I right? Are there aspects that mean the same? Uh, they are different, different, different. Um, Arwen is uh, a druidic word and it means um, it's the three rays. It's, it's the inspiration, creativity, uh, potion that Kerr Edwin made uh, in her cauldron to bring knowledge and inspiration. Uh, the Arwen is, yeah, it's different. The Arwen is that um, knowledge. There's three ways that you'll see the Arwen, the Druidic sign as well. It's the three ways of inspiration, creativity, knowledge. Um, very much linked to Credwin. Uh, so do have a look at that. And Taliesin, the first bard. Uh, yeah, different. Um, I don't know a huge amount about that side of things but that's as i understand it uh so different it is different um do, 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 do. Uh, 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 scroll this. lots of comments here we go uh when i moved i explained what was happening to the old family home told him it was time for him to have a new family to love him sadly the new owner has totally gutted the old home it does happen doesn't it and I, I think when we had our renovations done but we explained what was happening to the house just kept it in the loop it's going to be better it's going to be better when it's all done <laughs> Angela we need to sell up and move as it's far far too big for us now but the house definitely doesn't want us to leave but it needs a family now not a couple of old cottages <laughs> And I think that's perhaps part of it, isn't it? Explaining to the house, you know, we've had, we've done our thing here. It's time for us to move on and for you to welcome a new family. It's keeping the connection, isn't it? Keeping the connection. David, it broke my heart. It was totally lobotomized. That's a good description, isn't it? It is a good description. Little Miss Nemo, uh, okay, appropriation. Roman soldiers combining their spiritual ideas with native deities or spirits. Um, now, I've looked a bit in this because writing the Gods and Goddesses of England book, 
when the Romans came here, they uh, they did take on a few of the English deities, uh, and obviously they brought their own deities with them. Um, Sulis is a good one. She was such a powerful deity already being worshipped by ancient Britons that the Romans decided to adopt her, basically, and they called her Sulis Minerva. But they did that with a few. Minerva seems to have been attached to quite a few other deities. The Romans did like to nick. <laughs> the I mean, let's face it, most of the Roman deities are all copied from Greeks anyway. Um, uh, appropriation is a, it's a really, really difficult description and and situation um but bear in mind that probably a lot of us living in britain now have got roman heritage somewhere um they did like to um they did like to co-opt other deities um yeah it was one of their things <laughs> candy i drive by houses i lived in as a child i always think Tell them thank you and tell them how much I love them. Sometimes I think they need to hear that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Jane, I felt a hugely bad energy coming from a house I had to call at when I was an Avon rep. Turned out a young girl had died from an asthma attack there beside her father. Couldn't be asked to take her to hospital. House had a cold, hard atmosphere inside. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's really sad. Um, it happens. It happens. Karen, as far as I know, oh, and yes, as far as I know, it's a Welsh word too. Yeah, it's not the same as genius loci. Uh, it is. It's inspiration and creativity. But have a look at the story of Credwin and Taliesin, um for the Arwen thread. Um, oh, <laughs> sorry, I apologise if anyone thought their smoke detector was going off. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> uh, the fora do you think with the right love and therapy you can change the energy of a house absolutely absolutely i we're, it's connection you're working with energy whenever we work with spells whenever we work with healing whenever we work with ritual you are manipulating energy so making that connection with a house that's unhappy you can absolutely uh, change the energy of a house uh, oh, we're probably all used to the house feels a bit hinky feels a bit off let's smudge it um, or cleanse it or whatever you want to do to it and that does help but I think it's a bit of a process uh, working with the genius loci of the house or any place is building a relationship just as you would build a relationship with friends family deity making that connection and building that relationship with the spirit of place is just the same and you can affect that yeah absolutely Steve moved into our house in 1958. Dad had quite violent epilepsy, as did my sister. I'm sure this has given the house somewhat chaotic feel sometimes. Yeah, I can understand that. Absolutely. Oh, Steve, we're in the process of trying to calm everything down. And you will. It is a process. Um, it is a process. Angela, we loved Avebury. We lived not too far away from there before we moved to France and used to visit often. Loved the Rollwright Stones. Still a place I haven't been to yet, but that also feels like it's been drained of its energy and dying now. That's a shame. I did some of my third degree training on Dartmoor. Oh, I love Dartmoor. But there's a stone circle there and I did uh, an impromptu ritual there. That was part of my training. Thought we were just going on a you know jolly old yomp. <laughs> <laughs> the high priest when we got to the circle said to me right now as part of your training you need to do a ritual here and now <laughs> no preparation no nothing but the stone circle there was lovely and oh the energy of Dartmoor amazing Tess when I visited the house I live in I had seen 18 houses before this one it was empty with no furniture and it felt like home none of the other houses felt like this talk to her and feel sad when I have to leave Used to always be travelling for weeks on end, and for the first five years I was hardly here. Now I love being in the house. I'd love to pick it up and take it with me. Just thinking of moving. Yeah, I, you, we do. We build that connection. We do build that connection. Jane, not just the energy that drains you in Glastonbury. There aren't any shops where you can buy normal groceries. There was one cranky food shop in the main street, but no basic stuff. They have now. They've got they've got Tesco's in the high street, and I think there's a big Morrison's just outside. Um, but no, it's it's a different place. It's it's not a regular town, that's for sure. 
but then that I guess that's part of its draw isn't it Jane can remember having picnics amongst the stones yeah I think it's something like 76 77 that it first got you know fenced off um Senia, that's what I wondered. Only spiritual shops, few charity shops, geek store, that one small co-op, nothing that would accommodate my other interests. Yeah, I, I think living there has to be quite a, a life change. Uh, there are some fantastic shops. I have to give a shout out to Weird Raven. Most amazing heathen Viking store. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the Rainbow Cafe. Brilliant. That's some absolutely amazing food. There's some lovely places there. Uh, and I love the Abbey. I do love the energy of the Abbey. Um, Trudy. Oh, yes, Trudy. If Yes, if you live in Wales, uh, Welsh Heritage, absolutely. Look out the Arwen. Look out the story of Coedwin. Um, not the same as Genius Loci, but if you're in Wales, that's, that's the thread of history. Absolutely. Uh, little Miss Nemo. Not the same, but similar. I feel sad in a stately home where the family hasn't lived for years. There's no soul left and people tramping through with no sense of family or belonging. I think that's a bit of a double edged thing, isn't it? If you if you own a big old stately home, the upkeep of it must be phenomenal. I think a lot of families have been forced into uh, letting it out for tourist purposes purely for the upkeep of it. Um, yeah. Um. Oh, am I glitching? I apologise if I'm glitching. I'm not doing anything different than I normally do. <laughs> um, oh, the Romans were very adaptable. Yeah, they they, they liked, you know, um, they liked to nick stuff. But their way of working is very interesting. Um, so it is time and I'm going to I'm going to disappear quite um Oh, yes. Do have look out Mara Starling on YouTube if you are looking at Welsh pantheons, Welsh heritage, Welsh spirituality, uh, her YouTube channel and a TikTok channel. Mara Starling, absolutely brilliant for all things Welsh. Um, absolutely. Um, I'm going to disappear now because I'm going off yomping. The weather is not raining at the moment. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully... That was interesting and useful. Um, we did, Natalie, yes. A uh, big shout out to um, Stu's family at Weird Raven. We lost him very suddenly recently. Uh, but he did. He had the most amazing send off in Glastonbury. It looked fantastic. Um, yeah. Interesting genius loci. Definitely um, an interesting energy to work with uh, and fascinating. So thank you to everyone, as always, for joining me. I'm off out into nature. Uh, have fantastic spring equinox celebrations, if that's what you're doing, or autumn equinox celebrations, if that's what you're doing in the Southern Hemisphere as well. Uh, take care, everyone, and I will catch up with you all again next week. <laughs>